Welcome back everyone, I am Zadie and this is Kerbal Space Program and today people, today we're going to be landing on the moon. It is finally time. Episode 8 is going to mark the first time we land on a body that is not Kerbin. I am very excited for today and I hope you are too. You guys, your support has been amazing over the last couple of weeks. I, I can't say enough about you. Uh, the Z Nation is growing. And um, I, I'm super thrilled about that. Comments in every com comments in every video, you know, I'm getting great views. Um, I, I can't thank you guys enough. You guys are awesome. And I just want to give a quick shout out to uh, after I hit my microphone with my hand. Good quick shout out to Jolly Roger Aerospace. Uh, he's gonna give me a shout out on his channel. He's got about a, th a little over a thousand subs. He does like uh, videos where um, the ones that I watched, anyways, were uh, fighter. Uh, he actually takes the Kerbal Space Program and fights um, fighter jets and stuff like that. It's really cool. You should check him out. Uh, it's Jolly Roger Aerospace. He is in the comments of uh, episode seven. You can also click on uh, his name there to check him out. Or I'm sure he'll probably comment on this one as well. Uh, and, you know, got some other good people out there who have been commenting every time, like Farside Jake. Can't appreciate you, man. Really do. Anyways, now that I'm done sucking up to my crowd, let's get this thing going. Uh, yeah, you saw me make a little change there at the very beginning. It is, um, I put a, uh, a fairing on it. We have fairings! We don't have to worry about that weird shit happening anymore. We have fairings. It's amazing. I don't know how long I've had them unlocked. I just finally found them. It was great. Um, with this one, we're just going straight towards the moon. We're not even going to put ourselves in orbit. We're just going to shoot straight for the moon. I timed it to where uh, where I took off from Kerbin Space Center to where I'd be able to get up into the air and immediately shoot straight towards the moon. And that's what we're doing. We're getting there as soon as possible, as quickly as possible, because I do not want to mess around anymore. I want to get something on the ground on the moon. I'm going to go ahead and apologize for my voice right now. I am a little froggy. I had a really rough day at work yesterday. Uh, weather in the Northeast. It's always weather in the Northeast, if you've noticed. Uh, New York was terrible yesterday. And I um, my job requires me to make a lot of phone calls when weather's bad. i got to call pilots and ask them if they want to fly. And so I am a little froggy today because of that. And I do apologize. I hope the, the audio quality doesn't suffer too badly. Um, you can see right here, we're out in the middle. We're on our way or in our transition from Kerbin to the moon. We're going to go ahead and, and plot our maneuver node. Little side note, when you're in between Kerbin and the moon, you can set your maneuver point wherever you want to on that line. And you can do the maneuver point pretty much wherever. You don't have to actually be on the maneuver node. So you can see that, I mean, you have to spaceship pointed towards the maneuver node. But you don't have to actually be on the maneuver node itself. We we weren't anywhere near that maneuver node when we did that, and that's because you're you're transitioning between Kerbin and the Moon, and and the the changes that you make are so slight that it doesn't matter where you make them. Basically, right now we're gonna go ahead and uh, set our orbit around the Moon, and go ahead and start planning for our descent. Um, we're actually just going to go straight into it. We're not going to uh, we're not going to do a full orbit around the moon. We're going to go straight into it. Our satellites that we've put up uh, due to our missions to put satellites around the moon are definitely going to help us out here. As you can see, they've all got relay antennas on them. So even when we're on the backside of the moon, we're going to be able to do relays to Kerbin in order for us to control our spacecraft. That is. One of the main reasons why I've been doing so many satellite missions is so that when we do send a probe, we can contact Kerbin from the from the backside of the moon. So where the aircraft is right now, it could easily, um, it could easily contact Kerbin the normal way. But from the images you saw on the map, you could tell that it was actually relaying off of two different satellites. That's by design. It's it's not full coverage of the moon. There would be some dark spots to where when they when they orbit a certain way, they're not going to be in contact with with the the probe on the moon. But still, at the same time, it does give us extra coverage to where we don't have to worry about going going dark 
while we're we're landing. It's basically good timing and good kind of good planning. I'm not trying to like pat myself on the back too hard where I break my own arm, but it just happened to work out that way. We could have very easily lost contact with Kerbin during this descent, which would have been catastrophic for the probe because the probe would have just crashed into the moon and yada, yada, yada. So, I mean, it works out and it works in a good way, but it's not 100% coverage. And I've been recently thinking about doing it to where um, there is 100% coverage, but I haven't, I haven't done it as of yet. I'm, I'm more focused on getting the, the, the big sciences and stuff like that. And in order to get the really big sciences, we're definitely going to have to start sending Kerbins to the moon, which is going to be our next step after this. This is, this is step one is land a probe. Step two is send a Kerbin around the moon. And step three is profit. Or step four is profit. What's step three? No one knows what step three is. If anyone's ever seen Underpants Gnomes from South Park, you know what I'm talking about. God, I'm showing my age. Showing my age. South Park's been on for a really long time. Been a fan since 1998? I think it's when it first came out. And, yeah, I'm old. So, existential crisis aside, here we are coming down into the moon. We are landing in a crater. I did want to land in the big crater on the moon. Uh, just because it's a big crater and it's a pretty easy target. It's real easy coming down. See, even with this little satellite, um, satellite engine... Descent onto the moon is not very difficult. You just want to kill your... Um, holy shit, I was coming in hot. Okay, I did a suicide burn there. Don't recommend that. Um, anyways, when you're coming into the moon, it's very easy to uh, to land on. You just got to kill your vertical um, vertical velocity, which is your um, velocity to, uh, on, on the... See if I can say this right without sounding stupid. Your, um, not vertical velocity, your horizontal velocity, which is your velocity over the surface. So, where you're moving over the surface. You want to zero that and keep it zero. So, that way you're not moving on the surface, moving over the surface. You're coming down, but you're coming straight down. Do you get what I'm, I, I'm trying to explain it and I sound like a, a redneck trying to explain rocket science, which is basically what this is. Anyways, we're going to get our science. Kill, kill your horizontal velocity and keep your, your vertical velocity low. You want to land around, you know, four meters to, to 10 meters per second. If you land too hard, those little lander legs will, will break. And if the lander legs break, obviously you've lost the mission. So, oh, I mean, you haven't lost it. You could probably still get science from. It. But anyways, you, you just don't want to. You don't want to crater yourself. We do have a design flaw with this um, this particular uh, probe. It does not have enough power to transmit all the data at once. So I'm having to do it. Um, you're, there's an option on the um, the probe to send it partially, and then it'll send the other part. So it's like. It'll do part of the download, and then it'll do the rest of the download when it's got power. That's what I had to do in order to get all the information transferred over to Kerbin. It's a design flaw on my part. It's not that it's not getting enough energy from the um, the solar panels. Solar panels are working great. It actually has to do with the battery size. The battery on that is um, very small. and Because it is a small probe. It's smaller than the command pod, so you just got to keep that in mind. It's a very small probe. So it doesn't have a lot of battery power. I didn't realize how much power it took to transmit that stuff. I thought it would be okay, and it, it's not. Uh, the next time I do build a probe to go to um, either another part of the moon or Minimus, I'll end up uh, putting more batteries on it or better batteries on it to prevent that from happening. But you can see right now it's transmitting the data. I'm pointing to my monitor like a madman. Um transferring the data but the, the the electrical bar which is up at the top keeps going all the way down and it stops and just, and just kind of teeter tots and keeps going up but yeah that's that's basically what that that was here's the map uh as you can see we 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 really shouldn't even be getting a signal to Kerbin right now because that satellite's below the horizon of our probe but it, it's still giving it to us uh but you can see what I was talking about how we're we're moving into a, a phase where 
this probe is actually going to be on blackout because it's not going to be able to relay to any of the satellites. Our uh, polar satellite is down at the south pole of the moon, and our other equatorial satellite is getting ready to move behind the equator or behind the horizon to where we're not going to be able to communicate with with uh, Kerbin. So, like like I said earlier, it's not a perfect one, but at the same time, I, I think that serves as a good example as to what I was trying to say and with timing and everything. That if we'd been just a little bit later, we probably would have crashed onto the surface of the moon. I I got lucky. Not even going to try to pretend I didn't get lucky. I got lucky. But I'd rather be lucky than good any day because luck is better than being good something or along the lines of that. I don't know. Anyways, what I'm doing now is I'm going to rename the probe. We need to start naming some stuff other than just Sat1, Sat2, and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do in a show of appreciation for Sub101, we're going to name this thing after after the person who was my 101, 101st... Good God. Why can't I speak ever? We're going to name this thing after... Our, my subscriber who was subscriber 101 and his name or her name it's more than likely his name because my analytics point to, to uh, mostly mostly males but uh, yeah we're going to name this one sub 101 R158 which that was that's their their username R158 everyone give it up for R158 they were they put us over the 100 mark that I'd literally been teetering at for I'm um, months not no not months years a uh, long time long time I think this is the first time my channel has grown in a very long time and again I can't thank you guys enough uh your, your support for the the channel and everything has been fantastic I've really enjoyed doing this and yeah just thank you thank you guys so much also in um to uh rename another satellite we're gonna name it after the sub 102 the person who uh, was the 102nd one, just to show appreciation. Well, hell, we're here. We might as well do it. And that is for Michael. I'm not going to put your last name out there, buddy. I don't know if you want that or not, but yes. So, Sub-102 Michael is the name of another satellite. We're going to be naming them after our, our audience um, pretty much from here on out. We're going to be naming probes after, after my subscribers as a show of appreciation, especially for... Uh, People who uh, comment and 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 communicate with me, I you know I enjoy that. That's that's the fun part of this. Making the videos is fun because that's the hobby. But the actual fun is the, in the interactions with the uh, with my audience, and I really do I really do enjoy it. Uh, we've got some science to spin. We got 123.9 science, and we need to start thinking about our future and what we want to do. Now, what I'm thinking is I would like to put a carbon on the moon. Putting a Kerbin on Minimus is not that difficult. We can send any of my little rockets over there, and it'll get there just fine. And it'll be able to land and and land on um, Minimus and take off. But I want to build a lander, and that that uh, that right there has got the lander in it. It's got also uh, reaction uh, the control wheels and stuff. Um. I'm sorry, that one didn't have the lander in it. That had the probe bodies. I actually need the probe bodies first. If we can build better probes, that's got the lander can. Okay. Uh, da 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 da. We're probably going to go with the probe bodies first because it's going to be most useful right now. We'll be able to send better probes to and from um, Kerbin to either the moon or to uh to minimus we need to start upgrading our probes anyways uh we also need docking ports i know where that is that's in the um the one after this one that's got the small clampatron i i want to build a lander like the um the lander in that the apollo program used basically and better relay this just might be helping too but we're not going that far out so we should be fine for right now but it is uh, definitely something we're going to need here in the future. We're definitely going to need some RCS control as well if we're going to dock in space. So yeah, I've got I've got some stuff to I got some stuff I need to unlock there, man. Uh, probably need to do a flyby of the moon. We'll be able to get a lot of um, a lot of science from that if we do a flyby of the moon. 
And, uh, yeah, see, there's some other stuff. I need, uh, I need that one because that's got the, uh, the Clampatron, the big one, the big docking port. That'll be for the lander. Oh, man, we got a ways to go, don't we? We haven't really gone that far in our tree. We're still very early on in our tree. We're only on the, uh, we've only completed the, uh, uh, really the, uh, the fourth branch of the tree, which is still very early on. We're getting into some heavier stuff now. The good news is, is we do have a lot of money, so we can, we can do a lot of, uh, a lot more exploration and, uh, maybe do some more upgrades and stuff like that as well. I don't know, man. We, we got we got some stuff to figure out, but for right now, I think I'm going to go with the probe bodies. Go ahead and uh, get that knocked out and uh, pretty much go from there. Anyways, guys, that's taking us to the end of our episode for today. I really, really hope you enjoyed it. I had a blast. Putting a uh, probe on the moon was a lot of fun. And I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. If you did, if you could hit those like buttons, that share button, that subscribe button. As always, I'd appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time for more Kerbal Space Program. Redneck Space Program. Yeah!